study for women by women in accordance with 1 Timothy 2.12. Each month we discuss the study highlights and answer some of your questions. You can find more information about the Digging Deep Bible Study at thecollyhouse.org. Now let's grab our shovels and dig deep into God's Word. Welcome to the May 2017 edition of the Digging Deep podcast. Tonight we're excited to get to be with you and talk to you about some types from the Old Testament, things that signify um, blessings that we have in the New Covenant. And tonight we're going to be talking about the cities of refuge and the year of Jubilee. Seeing a look of consternation on the part of our tech person. Do I need to wait then, or should I stop? Okay, I think we're having an echo, so we're checking that out. But should I go ahead? You just tell me. Should we wait a second? We can start over in a moment. To get to be with you and talk to you about some types. You tell me what to do. Old Testament things that signify um, blessings that we have in the New Covenant. And tonight we're going to be talking about the cities of refuge and the year of Jubilee. Look of consternation on the part of our tech person. Do I need to be testing? Testing. Do I need to wait? Sound okay? Or should I stop? Okay, I think we're having an echo. So okay. That out. Are you all getting an echo at home? Can you tell us? Are we good? Yeah, we got it right. fixed. Okay, well let me just say that again without the echo. <laughs> good evening. <laughs> and welcome to the May 2017 edition of the Digging Deep Podcast. We're very excited to be with you tonight. I'm Cindy Colley and I have Emily Anderson with me and she's not a stranger to you <laughs> and I'm very grateful for her being here and as a matter of fact I have Ezra, my grandson this week and her husband even came tonight yes. with their boys to let Ezra hang out and play while the podcast is going on because Glenn, my husband, is in a meeting in West Virginia. Shout out to, I think it's Chapmanville, West Virginia. So I hope that you all are enjoying that. But tonight we are going to have fun focusing on the cities of refuge and the Jubilee and the things that they represent from the, from the Old Testament law, the things that they represent, the blessings that they represent to us as Christians mm -hmm. under the new law. So we hope that you're buckling up and getting ready for that study. We have a lot of things to cover, so we're going to get right to them. But first, Emily is going to lead us in a prayer. Let's pray. Father God, we are so thankful um, that we have this um, opportunity to gather together. Uh, we have the technology um, to um, gather over um, over computers and, and things of the like um, so that we can study your word together. We pray that this um, study and this the influence of this study will be far-reaching to women all across the globe. and that those of us who are studying will be encouraged to share with those women around us and, and that we will help souls um, to be saved through this study. We pray for your ultimate glory, Father, in all that we do. And um, we're so thankful um, for your son, for the refuge that we have in him, um, for the freedom that we have from sin and the rest that we have in Jesus. And it's in his name that we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, the two types that we're studying tonight do yep. not have as much about them in the New Testament as some of the things we've studied before. True. For instance, the high priesthood, it's so many yeah. chapters are about right. it even in the New Testament. Or, of course, the blood sacrifices, mm -hmm. just um, overwhelmingly obvious mm -hmm. that those things were foreshadowing our Lord Jesus Christ. Well, there's not as much about the cities of refuge no. and the year of Jubilee in the New Testament. But as I looked at it in preparing the study uh, last summer, I, I saw enough, and especially thematically, mm -hmm. I mean, when you look at the theme of uh, the city of refuge and what a refuge really means, when you mm -hmm. look at those things, you see obviously that, that, that the cities of refuge 
typify the eternal refuge that we have in mm -hmm. Jesus. Now, as we said earlier, in every type, you can't um, micro-examine and say, okay, but it's, it's like it in every way. Because mm -hmm. we're going to see a real breakdown right. of the parallelism when we talk about the cities of refuge. And, and can you think about what that main breakdown would be? The, the high priest uh, or? Well, that's one. There's a difference there in the death of the high priest and mm -hmm. our high priest doesn't die. But we're going to see also that, you know, really the, the cities of refuge were for the innocent. Right. And our refuge has to be for people who are guilty, guilty. of sin. Right. And so there's a cleansing that's involved, and our city of refuge is not for completely innocent people, but it's provided by the completely innocent mm -hmm. blood of the Lamb, as we've talked about. So let's just dig into Leviticus 35, first of all. Is that the right place? Le maybe Numbers, because you know what? I looked for a little bit because okay. there's not a little bit. Okay, maybe we're in Numbers. 35. 35. Maybe you should have told me that before I'm we started. So, Noel, we were starting right writing. It's we like starting right. Yeah, it's like I ran in here out of breath tonight, <laughs> right at time. In fact, they were down the hall looking for me before, so um, she didn't really have time to tell me. But we are in Numbers, chapter 35. I've had a two-year-old all day, and you've had three or four... <laughs> Yeah. yeah. So, so you all are going to have to bear with us. We're in Le we're in Numbers chapter 35, thirty-five, and that is where the cities of refuge are first. Um, I guess um, I'm going to use the word um, ordained, mm -hmm. or when they were first instituted or designated as cities of refuge. We read about them in Leviticus chapter thirty-five. And we notice there, I don't know what verses, I'm saying Leviticus again, Numbers <laughs> chapter 35, and I guess it starts pretty much in um, verse 11, you shall appoint mm -hmm. cities to be cities of refuge for you, that the slayer may flee there, any person who kills anyone unawares, and that would be what kind of killing? Uh, an accident, I mean, an accidental, accidental killing. killing. And uh, it says, They shall be to you, verse 12, cities for refuge from the avenger, that the manslayer may not have to die until he stands before the congregation in judgment. Okay, go ahead and start with verse 13. Okay, and of the cities which you give, you shall have six cities of refuge. You shall appoint three cities on this side of the Jordan, and three cities you shall appoint in the land of Canaan, which will be cities of refuge. These six cities shall be for refuge for the children of Israel, for the stranger and for the sojourner among them, that anyone who kills a person accidentally may flee there. I, I don't know how far you, you okay. do you want to keep going? Um, well, let's I mean, stop he, there and, and just discuss it for a little bit. Um, when we actually get to where these cities are, mm -hmm. how many of them were on the east side of Jordan? Three. Three were on the east side of Jordan. I think that that's remarkable because we really only have Reuben, Gad, and the half-tribe of Manasseh. But I think it's really noticeable here that God made a way mm -hmm. for everybody. What would have happened, let's say, if he were an innocent um, killer, and, that, mm -hmm. that, and we might not even yeah. call that a killer, but you slew someone accidentally, mm -hmm. and you needed to get to a city of refuge, but there's a river in between you and the city of refuge. Right. Well, that, that would, would be, have been very you difficult. Down. And right. I love that God made a plan here for um, everybody to be able to flee to the city of refuge. Well, they were all within a day's journey is what I had studied. They were all within a day's journey. Right. To, to easily, so you, you could, could get easily get there. A, any, I think what she means here is that anybody in any part mm -hmm. of the settlement that God had designated for Israel could get to a, a city. city of refuge mm -hmm. within a day. Right. So this was a sort of emergency preparedness mm -hmm. for innocent slayers. Yeah. And we, we do want to put a peg on the fact that you were supposed to be innocent. Now, I, I'm sure that there were guilty people who oh, yeah. went to those Try, cities. Yeah. But even right. so, there was a trial and there was mm -hmm. a punishment for those people. 
Now it was to provide time so that they could have a trial and that they could have protection from the Avenger. Who's the Avenger? The, the, um, we're talking about Old Testament. Mm -hmm. I mean, um, the person, like the family. Yeah, it's going to be the people who the, love the, person the dead who person. Was killed. Yeah, the person who was killed is going to have people coming for blood, especially if they think it was um, a murder. Right. So you are running to these cities if you're innocent so that the Avenger will not get you. But if you're outside the city and the Avenger gets you and kills you, even if you're innocent, then the Avenger will not be convicted mm -hmm. of murder mm -hmm. because you weren't in the city where you were supposed to be. Mm -hmm. And you stayed in that city for how long? Until the high priest dies. Until the high priest dies, that you have the right to stay mm -hmm. in that city. And when the high priest dies, then you go back to your possession. To, you can go back, yes. Right. So that is what a city of refuge is. And now, after studying this, I, I just wanted to say that I need a city of refuge mm -hmm. today. When I um, think about the inevitable sin that we are all guilty of and the fact that it brings such hopelessness, such despair, such, um, well, we could go pr practically and say disease, death, anxiety, lack of peace in the home, lack of peace in, in communities. When we look at what's going on in some of our communities in America today, we see what sin really does and we, you know, physically in America, some of us need a city of refuge at times, yes. but spiritually, we all need a place mm -hmm. where we can be safe from the consequences of sin. God gave us safety, not until the death of the high priest in our case, mm -hmm. but through, through the, death. the death of the high priest. Because as we studied in a previous lesson, Christ is our high priest. He died, and, and at the point of his death, the temple of the veil was rent, making a way for us to go into the most holy place for eternity. And when we think about that, we can also say that at that point, a city of refuge was provided for us. And through the death of the high priest, it is, uh, remember when the high priest died, they went back to inherit. Mm -hmm. And when our high priest died, he gave us the inheritance of the soul. Mm -hmm. And 1 Peter 1, 4 is a great place to go to read about that inheritance. Um, if you all want to turn there, 1 Peter 1, verse 4, and Emily will read that for us. Yeah. 1 Peter 1, verse 4. To an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled, and that does not fade away, reserved in heaven for you. I love that, that, I love that way that heaven is mm -hmm. described as our inheritance, and I love that word reserved. Mm -hmm. Now, when a person went to the city of refuge, his inheritance was reserved until such time that the high priest died. Right. So, when we think about our inheritance and our reservation, it is because of our high priest that that awaits us. So I love that comparison as well. Mm -hmm. Now let's t let's put a peg right there and see if we have comments from the wall. Uh, not no. Okay. Nothing. And what do you have, Emily, that you'd like to say thus far? You have anything extra? Um, let's see. I did write down some extra things, but I think we're going to be talking about some of them okay. as, we, as we go on. We can wait if you would rather. Um, yeah. Okay. Uh, well, here's where I wrote down about the Matthew Henry um, commented that um, the city of refuge was in the center of each. It was divided into three districts as near as might be equal, and a city of refuge in the center of each, so that every corner of the land might have one within reach. Um, and he compared it to Christ is not a refuge at a distance, um, but he is near to us. Very good. So we are near, you know. Very good. We are near to our refuge. Now, I don't know why I didn't include this here, but we definitely are going to go over the names of yes. the cities of refuge. And that's, if you're, if you're working in the workbook at the top of page 66, we named each of those cities and we found the meanings of those names. And Emily even put them on a map. And as I was looking at her <laughs> yeah. little map, I, I could see that they are uh, very evenly spaced right. throughout. They're not, you know, a clump of them up here at the top mm -hmm. of the kingdom. They're evenly spaced throughout. 
The first one was called Kiddush, and that means holy place. And I ask you then to see if you can find a New Testament passage that shows us that the church or Jesus, either one, is a type of that name, a holy place. And I'm going to uh, throw out my passages, and then we'll let Emily throw in what she has, and then we'll see if you have some different passages. I first have Isaiah 66, verses 17 to 24. And you're saying, Cindy Colley, you said a New Testament passage, so why are you first of all going to Isaiah? And I'm doing that because Isaiah is a prophecy of, uh, he's a Messianic prophet. And so whatever he says about the church is definitely true. And I wanted us to look at Isaiah 66. And it's really all through that chapter, but let me find where I wanted us to start. I think about verse 17. Um, it talks about the holiness of the church, that they might mm -hmm. sanctify themselves and purify themselves. And this is Zion's future hope in the gardens behind one tree in the midst. Eating swine's flesh and the abomination of the mouth shall be consumed together, says the Lord, for I know their works and their thoughts. It shall come that, and here's the prophecy of the church, I will gather all nations and tongues, and they shall come and see my glory, and I will set a sign among them. And then he goes on to describe the church, and he says, um, They shall declare my glory, bottom of verse 19, among the Gentiles. And they shall bring all your brethren for an offering of, of the Lord out of all nations. And then it says, they will bring them to his holy mountain. Verse 20, Jerusalem, says the Lord, as the children of Israel bring an offering in a clean vessel into the house of the Lord. And I will take of them, that's the Gentiles, priests. And for Levites, says the Lord, he says, those people who are priests now and Levites, I'm going to take Gentiles for those positions in my new kingdom because it's going to be a new heavens and a new earth that I'm going to make in verse 22. And, and this is going to be a holy, sanctified people that's going to, and this is going to happen in my holy mountain, Jerusalem. So definitely from this passage, this um, messianic prof this uh, prophecy about the church, we're seeing that it is going to be a holy kingdom. Then I went over into the New Testament and went to 1 Peter chapter 1, mm -hmm. where we are commanded to be holy, verses 15 and 16, even as He is holy. And then I also thought about 1 Corinthians chapter 5, chapters 5 and 6, really. Mm -hmm. In chapter 5, we, talk, we see where the God was calling those people to put sin out of the camp, to mm -hmm. sanctify and withdraw themselves from unholiness that they might be um, a clean and pure and holy people. And then in chapter 6, you remember it says, um, I think we're about verse uh, 8 and 9, you were some of these things. And then he lists some, some sins. And, and he's really talking about sins of heathen people, sins mm -hmm. of the Gentiles. And he says, you were some of these things, but now you are washed and sanctified and justified. So I think that that uh, really parallels very clearly Isaiah chapter 66 where it says, I'm going to take Gentiles and I'm going to make priests out of them. And here in 1 Corinthians 5 and 6, he's saying, I want you mm -hmm. as Gentiles who have come out of unholiness. You have put away fornication, adultery, and, and 1 Corinthians 6 verse 9, you have been washed, sanctified. That means called to be holy mm -hmm. and justified. And then I wanted to mention also that the very word for church, which is ecclesia, means called out, called out for the purposes of God. So Kedish was a city meaning holy place, and certainly the church today is a holy place. Mm -hmm. So what did you have, Emily? Um, I have um, Colossians 1.22 is one of mine. I also had the First Corinthians ones that you had, but... Mm -hmm. um, for Colossians 1.22 says, In the body of his flesh through death to present you holy and blameless above reproach in his sight. And then um, First Peter, I have chapter 1. Uh, fifth, Which is what I said. Yeah, right, the, the 15 being and 16, holy ones. Right. Mm -hmm. And then I have t chapter 2 um, verses. Did I put 5? 
Nine. Oh, yeah, it's starting at nine, but you are a chosen generation, mm -hmm. a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people, that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his light. Very um, good. Verse 19 of chapter 1, too. Without yes. blemish and without spot. Yes. Uh, that's what our sacrifice was. Mm -hmm. And so, therefore, he calls us out to, verse 22, purify mm -hmm. our souls in obeying the truth. So it's all over First Peter. But yeah. really, it's all over the New Testament. Mm -hmm. Holy place is just a given that we are the Israel of today and therefore mm -hmm. from the mountain of Jerusalem and Jerusalem was the place where the call was first mm -hmm. made on the day of Pentecost. So from that mountain of Jerusalem, we are called to be his holy people. So do we have comments from any of the women uh, about yet. those things? Mm -hmm. Okay, then we have, <coughs> the next one is, I've always said Shechem, but I'm hearing preachers more and more say Shechem, Shechem. and I didn't really look it up. But it means strong shoulder. And so this one could refer to the man Jesus Christ, the Lord Jesus Christ, or the church, I believe. And I put, again, I started in prophecy in Isaiah 9, verse 6. Isaiah 9, verse 6. And that one says, For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder and his name shall be called wonderful counselor the mighty god the everlasting father the prince of peace and of course we know that that's descriptive of jesus and we read a whole bunch about that in luke chapter one we see some of that repeated in the first chapter of luke but it says there that the government our law is upon the shoulder of jesus christ so he is a strong shoulder in prophecy and i also added uh first timothy one Verses 16 and 17, which says, are you there? Not yet. First Timothy 1, 16 and 17 says, For this cause I obtain mercy, that in me first Jesus Christ might, be sh might show forth all longsuffering for a pattern to them which should hereafter believe on him to life everlasting. Now verse 17, to, unto the king, that's Jesus, eternal, immortal, invisible, the only wise God, be honor and glory forever and ever. The strength of that shoulder there. Mm -hmm. Eternal, immortal, invisible. And, and I love it that it's paired with, though, verse 16, which says he's long-suffering. So I think shoulder here, if we're looking, if we're thinking about the, um, the word, actually, shoulder, it's a shoulder, we, we say, um, I just need a shoulder to crawl on. Right. You know, we say we use it that way, and it says here, Jesus is that for us. He's long suffering with us. He's patient with us. He's kind to us. But he is in, he is invisible. He is indestructible. He is forever. He is immortal. He's the only wise God. So the strength of that shoulder that we have, that's long suffering, is pretty amazing. And then I have Matthew sixteen eighteen, of course, which says that the church of Jesus Christ will never pass away. Mm -hmm. um, when, when Peter made that confession, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God, and he said, on this rock I'll build my church and the gates of hell cannot prevail against it, will not prevail against it. So the eternality and strength of the church is there. And then I put Philippians 4.13 also, which says we can do all things through Christ. He's strong, he's our shoulder. So those are just some of the ones that came to my mind. And we're all over the place here because yeah. everybody's going to get different verses yeah. because you can go these are broad. Right. You can go because I went a different direction okay. than you did. Right. And I you just, tell me what your direction well, is. Well, I, I went with, the, with the, the, the church specifically as bearing one another's burdens. Um, as, you know, when I thought of strong shoulder. So I put... Um, like in Hebrews 10, where it talks about stirring one another up, and I talked in um, so loving good works, mm -hmm. and Galatians 6, uh, where it talks about bear it actually says bearing one another's burdens. Um, so that's the direction that I went with that. And I thought about in Acts, you know, when they were um, in chapter 4, you know, as they were, you know, help, you know, selling all that they had to help each other Th those kind of things is is Very what good. i thought and of. even so, in acts too when you when you see mm -hmm. that um they had all things common right very good, and that leads us to the next one, which is mm -hmm. Hebron, the which means fellowship. fellowship right? so that would go right into that word. Mm -hmm. And um, I put First John fourteen mm -hmm. for Hebron, 
verses 17 to 21. Not 1 John 14. There's no 1 John 14. Oh, yeah. John. Um, I think, yeah, I think I'm in John, John because I'm talking about the fellowship with the Father and the brothers. Is that yeah. John 14? Uh, sounds right. Let's just see. This has been some some kind of week for me. I'm telling you, my I've uh, been with my dad all week, and my dad is uh, not sleeping at night, so that means neither am I. <laughs> so let's let's try John 14, and yeah, um, oh, that's not the right place. I mm. am talking about where he says. Um, it, I have written fellowship with the Father and brothers. I think it is it is for, First John, but it must be four. four. Let me look and see. Um, um, I, I'm going to find it because it's fellowship, and First John is all about right. fellowship. Um, yes. I had one from. Had, What'd you get from I first had John? First John one verse three and then six and seven. Go ahead and tell me what you have and I'll find what I'm looking for. Um okay, so the first John one three, um that which we have seen and heard we declare to you that you may also have fellowship with us, and truly our fellowship is with the Father and with his son, Jesus Christ. And then six and seven of that mm -hmm. same chapter, um, it is talking about if we say we have fellowship with him and then it talks about walking in the light. Um I wrote down Acts 2.42 where it talks about the fellowship of believers. Okay. Um, 1 Corinthians 1, 1.9, 2 Corinthians 13.14. Oh, and then Philippians 1, 5 through 7 where it talks about a partnership in the gospel. Okay, I had that one, Philippians 1, verse 5, which mm -hmm. talks about the fellowship of the gospel. And then um, I, I'm going to go ahead and say that I was talking, I mean, I don't know what I was talking about. And I don't... I, I don't know why this passage that I wrote down really has very little to do with, I mean, First John 14. I don't even know what that what that was, <laughs> but um, I am in First John, and in chapter two here, we have um, verse 10. If you love your brother, you mm -hmm. abide in the light, and if you hate your brother, you're in darkness. And then he says, "I'm writing unto you, fathers," verse 13, because you've known him that's from the beginning, and it. I write unto you, young men, because you've overcome the wicked one. I write unto you, little children, because you've known the Father. I have written unto you, fathers, because you've known him that is from the beginning. And I have written to, unto you, young men, because you are strong, and the word of God abides in you, and you have overcome the world. Love not the world. I love that because he's pointing out everybody in every generation within the kingdom, and he's saying, you're all going to overcome together, mm -hmm. and you got to love each other. you got to love your brother to abide in the light, and if you don't, you're in the darkness, and you can't love God if you don't love your brother. So, I, I, and, and it's, he's sort of here saying, it's you and me as a family against the world. Yeah. you got to overcome the world. Yeah. So, um, it is the fellowship. Hebron means fellowship, and we definitely have fellowship in the church, and that's right. all over the all over the New Testament. Yeah, we can't make it without each other, and I'm sure that y if you're listening right now, you have passages too because they're everywhere. Mm -hmm. So, do we have any comments? Yeah, Alyssa Hannes um, was said Galatians six two Christians are called to bear each other's burdens. Philippians two fourteen we can do all things, the hard things through Christ. And Matthew eleven twenty eight, we can lay upon him our burdens. Um, then she put, oh, she meant Philippians 4, 13, not 2, 14. Um, and then <laughs> 1 Corinthians 1, 9 is where it talks about fellowship um, of his son, and that's from Minty. So. Very good. Okay, Beezer is the next one, and it's a strong hiding place. Mm -hmm strong hiding place. And here I put probably the most definitive New Testament passage about refuge, and that's Hebrews 6.18. Yeah. And I, I definitely want to talk about Hebrews 6.18, but I kind of wanted to leave that right. to conclude the cities of refuge. Mm -hmm. But Hebrews 6.18 is a definite place where we learn that we have a strong consolation, a refuge to lay hold on our hope. So we'll comment on that more. Okay. But what other passages do, do you um, have? Let's see. The hiding place. I, oh, I'm, I'm trying to remember what direction I went with this one now. I have 
First Corinthians. A ton of verses there. 15. So. I know, but I can't. First Corinthians fifteen twenty four. I can't guarantee what that one says, but um, I'll maybe be able well, to think of what the, I was thinking. That's about the resurrection. Okay. So First Corinthians fifteen. But what was 24. I Then comes oh, the end when he shall have delivered deliver up the, the kingdom. kingdom. I think I was looking at kingdom okay. references. The um, kingdom to God. Being our hiding hiding place, I okay. guess, is what I guess. I think I had a little bit of a hard time with this one, just thinking outside of just Hebrews 6, 18 okay. as, a, as a hiding place. Um, and I think someone had suggested uh, looking at kingdom references. I think on the, so I, I did on that. The page. Yeah. And so um, I went with those. Anywhere that uh, we read that in the church we are protected mm -hmm. by each other, by our relationship with the Father, even 1 Corinthians 10 13, there have no temptation taken you, right. but that you will be able to find a way of escape that that way will be provided. That's a hiding place. God mm -hmm. has put us in a place where we are inaccessible, more inaccessible to the devil. Mm -hmm. Resist him and he'll flee from mm -hmm. you. That's a right. hiding place. All of right. those are hiding place verses when we uh, see that we are helped away from the devil by being in Christ. Now I did, um, I, I uh, Hebrews 12, 28 um, talks about a kingdom that can't be shaken. And, um, and then um, also, you know, when I think about that too, like in Romans 8, 37 through 39 or so, where it talks about being more than conquerors mm -hmm. and nothing can separate us. And in verse 1, there is therefore yeah, now no condemnation, condemnation to those right. who are in Christ, hidden in Christ, right. hidden from all of the uh, damnation, death, mm -hmm. temptation, even to an extent, of right. the devil. So, nothing, so all those yeah. are hiding places. And more than conquerors, I love that. All right, and then the next one is Ramoth, which is a high place. And I started there in Revelation 22, verses 9 and 10, where it talks about the high kingdom in heaven. Mm -hmm. And then I went to Colossians 3, 1, where it says we're looking for the things that are above. And of course, really, when we think about uh, the prophecy like we talked about a while ago in Isaiah 66, it says it's, that the kingdom is going to be a high place. Mm -hmm. So... It, Matthew 5, you're the light of the well, world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden. That's what I immediately thought of when I, when I went to this one was Matthew 5. we got to be above the world. Right. And I, if I be lifted up, will draw all men unto me. Mm -hmm. You know, um, there are lots of different places mm -hmm. you can go with high place, but you tell us, tell us some of yours. Um, well, I will say, um, let's see, Acts 2.36. I remember what that exactly says. Right well, there. that is when they were pricked in their hearts. That is the right. verse before they were pricked in their, their hearts. hearts. So, well, okay. Oh, that was 36. I was looking at 36. I don't know why I wrote that one down, actually. Oh, 236. I don't know why I wrote that one down. <laughs> It's okay. We're good. Uh, I may have written that down wrong. <laughs> you wrote that down so I would feel better. Okay. So, and um, well, I don't know. But sorry. What do they have about high place? Do they have any so far? Oh, Colossians three two. Set your heart on things above. Okay, I had that one. Uh huh. Um, nothing else yet. All right. Oh, I know that the Philippians 2.15, where it talks about shining as lights, um, that one kind of came to mind when, when the city on the hill, um, you know, um, I can't remember exactly what the verse says, but it talks about how we're, we're shining lights. All right. So okay. that one kind of came to mind too. Okay. So. All right. And then we have Golan, which was an enclosure for captives. And I, um, you know, these, these, um, overlap so very much. Yes. But I went to Revelation 22, end of the Bible, verses 14 and 15, where it says, Blessed are they that do His commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life, and they may enter in through the gates into the city. 
For without are dogs and sorcerers and whoremongers and murderers and idolaters and whosoever loves and makes a lie. So I decided with this one to go with the eternal church, mm -hmm. the one in heaven, and how that we are separated forever from anything evil, from anything vile, and with any, from anything that could hurt us. So it, we are enclosed eternally uh, and, and separated from anything mm. that's dangerous. Yeah. So that's okay. what I decided for that one. What do you have? Well, I'm afraid to say now what I have because <laughs> I may have gone off the wall. I'm looking at Second Peter 1, 10 and 11. Um, Therefore, brethren, be even more diligent to make your call and election sure. For if you do these things, you will never stumble. For so an entrance will be supplied to you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom. Hey, of wait a minute. An Salem. entrance into mm -hmm. the everlasting kingdom. You right. will be enclosed and you will right. never... St I think I would, I, you will never stumble um, stood out to me too. Okay, so. okay very good. Uh, Romans 6.18, which would be the chapter that we're going to be going to in a little mm -hmm. bit too. Um, I think I went with like protection um, when I thought about this one. Um, free see. from sin. Yeah. Um, for I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory um, that we will be revealed. Um, not real sh Yeah. Let's see my, my thinking. Oh, wait. That was eight in chapter six. I'm sorry. And having been set free from sin. Okay. So. Very good. Well, those were similar. So yeah. That's very good. Okay, so those are the names and the passages that came to our mind. But right. you, again, we're all over the board yeah. here because you can be all over the board with these because uh, all of these are broad terms, but all of them are terms that can describe our relationship and our position in the kingdom, the kingdom. Okay, so do we have other comments or can we move on from um. here? Alyssa Hannah just said, that means of heaven, a high place, also reiterated in Matthew 6, 33. Seek ye first the, the kingdom, kingdom of God and his righteousness. Very good. Now, what danger were men escaping when they were running to a city of refuge? And what danger do we escape in the church? Well, the danger that they were escaping was? The avenger. The avenger. When they were innocent. And we read that very clearly in, mm -hmm. I have it right this time, Numbers 35, <laughs> verses 11 to 28, and exactly how that worked. But we are escaping. I put death by an avenger. That's what mm -hmm. they were escaping. We are escaping death when we are guilty. They were mm -hmm. escaping death when innocent. We, unlike them, are escaping death when we were guilty. And I mentioned Romans, Romans 8, 1. There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ. So we're escaping death. Even though it is what we deserve, He has given us a city, and He has given us clear terms of entrance into that city. And if we are in that city, then the devil, the ultimate... Um, uh, he is death. Mm -hmm. I mean, the wages of sin is death. The ultimate killer can't get us because mm -hmm. we are in that city of refuge, Romans 8.1. Mm -hmm. I wrote Romans 8.1 and 2 as well. Okay. Um, I just had a quote here from a commentary. Well, let's hear it. Um, it says, These cities stand as a type of the church in which safety from the avenger of blood, Satan, may be received only by entering and remaining within the sanctuary, uh, the, the city. Although the ancient refugee was required to remain within the haven until the death of the high priest, no such termination of residence within the church is allowed because the Christian's high priest lives forever, okay. which I know we're going to talk yeah, about Yeah, we're going to get but. to that. All right, good. All right, then what nationalities were included in those who could run to a city of refuge? And what about today, those who can find safety in the church? Mm -hmm. Well, Numbers 35:15. And the original description of the cities of refuge says it was for all people. Mm -hmm. And I put Matthew 28, 19, which is the Great Commission. Mm -hmm. And Jesus says there, I get it exactly right. Matthew 28, verse 19. Go therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. 
I put Galatians 3, 28 and 29, where we read, There's neither Jew nor Greek, bond nor free, mm -hmm. but you're all one in Christ Jesus. Also put Ephesians 2, verses 17 to 22, which says there, uh, and came and preached peace to you which were afar off and to them who were near. Those who were afar off is the Gentiles mm -hmm. and those who were near were the Jews. For through him we both have access by one spirit to the Father. Now therefore you, you Gentiles, are not strangers and foreigners, but you are fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God and are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone, in whom all the building fitly framed together grows to a holy temple in the Lord, in whom you also, you Gentiles, are built together for a habitation of God through the Spirit. It's probably my favorite one there mm -hmm. because it just so clearly gives Gentiles access to a refuge right. in those passages. So what do you have to add to that? Um, I put down 1 Corinthians 12, 13, where it talks about whether Jews or Greeks, whether slaves or free, um, mm -hmm. and all have been made to drink into one spirit. Um, Colossians 3, 11, there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcised or uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave or free, but Christ is all and in all. 2 Peter 3, 9, God wants all to come to repentance. 1 Timothy 2, 4, God desires all men to be saved and to come to a knowledge of the truth. So. Aren't you glad that we have her tonight? This <laughs> <Not> is awesome. <laughs> no, I don't know. Yeah, this is, I feel like I got the cities this all wrong. This is great. <laughs> look at my page here. Just look at this and look at her page. I mean, I'm so <laughs> impressed. Okay, let's look at number five. A way was prepared for the es escape to a city of refuge. That's um, we, we hear about that in Deuteronomy 19, verse 3. So, give us a passage that assures us today that the way to the church is prepared and marked. Well, for that one, I first of all thought about John the Baptist. That, that's and I went exactly to, what I Yeah, I went to Matthew 2, verses 2 through 6, where mm -hmm. um, they were saying, Where is he that is born king of the Jews? For we've seen his star in the east and are come to worship him. When Herod the king had heard these things, am I in the wrong place? Um, when Herod the king had heard these things... Uh, yeah, I'm in the wrong yeah. place. Um, I wrote down the Isaiah reference, so I don't have the... Um, the I'm in three. I'm yeah. in Matthew three. Oh, here. Yeah, Matthew three. Matthew three, three. Verse three, verses two through six. Yeah. Um, in those days came John the Baptist preaching in the wilderness and saying, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. He's marking it here. He's saying, Hello, listen up. It's time for it. Here it is. For this is he that was spoken of by the prophet Isaiah, saying, The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare ye the way of the Lord, and make his paths straight. And then it goes on and talks about um, how that they came to him from Jerusalem and all Judea and were baptized of him in Jordan, confessing their sins. So he was saying, I'm here. I'm a sign. This is the uh, marker in the road. And he was preparing the way for, um, and his, you were about to say that Isaiah said he's going to yeah, come. Clear the so way. where was that? That was Isaiah 40, verse 3, okay. where he talks to me about clearing the way for the Lord in the wilderness, make smooth in the desert a highway for our God. A highway. A highway. Right. Smooth out a highway. <laughs> right, right. Where you can't get any more <laughs> marked than that. And then I put Colossians 1, verses 19 through 26, and especially verse 26. Let's hope. Okay. That for once, <laughs> I have the right passage. Well, I think so. Um, okay, Colossians 1. If we both have it down, then there's a I, lot better chance. I don't have Colossians, okay. but that doesn't mean anything. All right, yeah, this is the one about the mystery. Yes. And um, when you start in verse 19, it pleased the Father that in Him should mm -hmm. all fullness dwell. And having made peace through the blood of His cross by Him to reconcile all things unto Himself. You who were sometimes alienated, who is that again? Uh, the, uh, the Gentiles, Gentiles were sometimes right. alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked mm -hmm. works. He is now reconciled in the body of his flesh through death mm -hmm. to present you, and we have all the names coming up again, to present you holy mm -hmm. and unblameable <clears throat> and unreprovable in his sight if you continue in the faith grounded and settled and aren't moved away from the hope of the gospel which you've heard and which was preached to every creature which is under heaven, whereof I, Paul, am made a minister. 
And then he goes on to say that he has suffered for the body of Christ. And then he says, I'm made a minister according to the dispensation of God, which is given to me for you. And 26, even the mystery, which has been hid from ages and from generations, but now is made manifest or obvious mm -hmm. to his saints. So he's saying here that it's obvious, it's marked, you can recognize it. And the mystery, whatever mystery there was in the Old Testament has now been revealed. Mm -hmm. Okay, what else? Well, I... After thinking of the John the Baptist, I had a hard time with this one. So last night at the study, I got some, I got some other inputs on okay. this, and um, some went with um, like John ten nine where he said, where Jesus says, "I am the door," um, and fourteen six, "I am the way." Um, <clears throat> and let's see, I know Ephesians two eighteen and three twelve talk about having access. Okay, very good. Um, so. Uh, Hebrews 10, 19 through 22 is the high uh, in entering into the most holy place. I'm, I'm pretty sure that's what that talks okay. about there. Um, Boldness to enter into to the, the holy adult. by the blood of Jesus, mm -hmm. by a new and living way that he has consecrated for us. Very good. Right. Okay. Those are good ideas. All right. Do we have anything else we, uh, on the wall? Yeah. Um, we got some comments. Okay. Um... Melissa Hannah mentioned Galatians 3, 6, back when we were, right after we talked about the high place. Okay. Um, Which says, even as Abraham believed God and it was accounted to him for righteousness, Galatians 3, 6. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, oh, so we're safe in God. Okay. Your sons, we're safe. And then she says, um, Isaiah 53, 4 and 5, Jesus bore our sins so that we didn't get the punishment we deserved, which means we escaped the judgment due to us. Very good. And then Holly is just letting me know that Acts 2.36 was her fault from last night. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that <Holly>. she, <laughs> I wrote, because I was writing down what, they, what verses they had, and she said that she had looked up verses about Christ being exalted when we were referring to the high place. So, um, so exalted in our worship towards Him. So okay. she used that. I'm Acts glad that you did explain yourself. I was about to <laughs> ban you, Holly, from listening. Okay. Okay. Um, Minty says Colossians 1.18, he is the head of the body, the church. Alyssa says Ephesians 4.30, we are sealed for the day of redemption. That is a way that we are marked. Very good. We are sealed. And then she says Ephesians 4.30, we are sealed for the day. Oh, I think that must have hit okay. twice. So. Okay. Okay. All right. Now, according to Numbers 35, a protected man had to be inside the city to be safe. And this is one that's so rhetorical. Mm -hmm. We have to be in Christ, yeah. in the kingdom, in the body, in the church, mm -hmm. in order to be spiritually safe and cite a passage. We've done this many times, mm -hmm. but Ephesians 1 is replete with them. Yeah, in verse 3, that is where all the spiritual blessings mm -hmm. are. In verse 7, that is where redemption is, even mm -hmm. the forgiveness of our sins. Romans 8, 1, that yeah. is where there is no condemnation. Mm -hmm. Colossians 1, verses 13 and 14, that is the place in which we have been delivered from darkness and translated to be in the light in mm -hmm. his dear in the kingdom of his dear son mm -hmm. there are so many yeah. passages that you could put so mm -hmm. let's add to my list I pretty much got I got Romans 8 um, Galatians uh, 3 26 through 29 about you know, putting, um, being baptized into Christ. Into Christ. And you could go with Romans 6, 3, and 4 there. Right. Ephesians 1 um, and 2.13. Uh, for those in Christ, we have been um, brought near by the blood. If you're, oh, But that's only for those that are in, in Christ. Christ. Um, I, this, this may be off, but Philippians 4, 7 talks about guarding our hearts, but that's only if we're in Christ. It doesn't necessarily say in Christ, but... Mm. Um, but just the, the protection there, I guess. Um, and, but you only know, really, for those in Christ. The whole book of Acts is just yeah. a treatise on <laughs> right. how there is safety in, in the body of Christ. Right. So, yeah. You could have lots and lots of different passages yeah. there mm -hmm. um, about in Christ. So, do we have other things, other comments? Not yet. All right, let's it. go on and look then. When could a protected man finally leave the city if he wanted to, according to Numbers 35? And that was when the high priest died. Mm -hmm. And it says, does this happen for us? 
our high priest never dies. And we looked back at our chart that we had on mm -hmm. page 56. And if you're on page 56 in the book, if you don't have a book, that's fine. But uh, we, we talked about um, that our high priest, it's the intercession point down with this to the succession point. Mm -hmm. Our high priest is Christ. And in Hebrews, is that 723? Mm -hmm. There were lots of high priests because of death. Right. But our high priest lives on, is forever, is eternal. Hebrews 7, verses 15 to 28. He ever lives to make intersection. <laughs> Inter <laughs> <laughs> he ever lives to make intercession. He is after the order of Melchizedek, so he's like unlike any other priest. He doesn't die. So that is where the analogy breaks down. Mm -hmm. Their high priest had to die, and they left to go back to their inheritance. Our high priest doesn't ever die. He right. lives on. And so he brings us to him, to our inheritance, which is in heaven. Yeah. Comments or um, anything about says that? says on number six, um, says the Colossians 3, 6 says that God's wrath comes on those who are not in Christ. Very good. Um, and then Minty mentions in Christ, Acts 5, 14. Very good. All right. Let's now, let's see. I'd like for us to go to Hebrews 6 now. Okay. I really wanted to talk about the last few mm -hmm. verses of Hebrews chapter 6 because they're key to our study. And if you're in Hebrews 6, let's just go ahead and read the last four verses of that chapter, Emily. Okay. okay. Thus God, determining to show more abundantly to the heirs of promise the immutability of his counsel, confirmed it by an oath, that by two immutable things in which it is impossible for God to lie, we might have strong consolation, who have fled for refuge to lay hold of the hope set before us. This hope we have as an anchor of the soul, both sure and steadfast, and which enters the presence behind the veil, where the forerunner has entered for us, even Jesus, having become high priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. Okay, so here we have verse 18 is, uh, you know, if we wanted to just zoom to a verse, that mm -hmm. is the theme of the cities of refuge, that by two immutable, that is unchangeable things, in which it was impossible for God to lie, we might have this strong consolation. That is, we might be comforted mm -hmm. because we have fled for refuge. We're in the city of refuge to lay hold on the hope right. set before us. I love that passage mm -hmm. because it says that there are two things that I can really, really count on. Mm -hmm. And from the context, I think we can see that it is the purpose of God, the eternal purpose of God. He didn't decide as an afterthought that he was going to make us a city of refuge. He determined from before the time the world was ordained that he was going to make a place of safety for mm -hmm. us. And because his purpose cannot be changed, it cannot be altered, an enemy cannot defeat it, I, I know, I am comforted in knowing that my salvation is my city of refuge is secure. Mm -hmm. That's the first immutable thing, his purpose. And then the second immutable thing is his confirmation through a promise. A multiple times promise, but I think from the context, we can look up and see God made that promise to Abraham. He could swear by no greater. He swore by himself. Wow. You know, God here swore by God. Right. You know, we throw around that. I mean, I don't, but mm. I hear people throw around that. I swear to God this, and I swear to God that. We, we can't. Mm -mm. Uh, that, that's blasphemous to say, but it's not blasphemous when we talk about God swearing by himself because God couldn't look up and say, okay, what immutable, what unchangeable thing can I pick out to mm -hmm. swear by? Right. He swore by <laughs> the most secure, unchangeable, powerful Dominant. You can go ahead and just name the adjectives that that describe the highest of the high. And he swore by himself to Abraham that of his seed, he 
all nations would be blessed and that we're going to um, Genesis 22 here when he reiterated that promise after the um, sacrificing on Mount Moriah of Isaac mm -hmm. and he said you know trust me Abraham I'm God and I'm promising you that you know Ezra this week was talking my grandson is two and he was talking about uh, Isaac and he said mammy did you know that Isaac means laughter and I said you're right Ezra it means laughter and he said and God and Abraham said to God well God I'm an old man I can't have any children and God said look at the stars Abraham and that is what God said mm -hmm. God's in charge of the stars and when he makes a promise We've, we've said this lots of times. You can put it in the past tense. Mm -hmm. It has already yeah. happened. So here in Hebrews chapter 6, he's saying, you've got this, I'm going to call it city of refuge. He calls it refuge or consolation, comfort, the safe place. And I'm promising you that you're going to be safe there because it was my eternal purpose. That's not going to change. Mm -hmm. And God swore, I swore by myself, and I can't find anything higher to swear by. And I mm -hmm. promised it over and over. And you have those two immutable things. Mm -hmm. And so you don't worry that your city of refuge is vulnerable or volatile. When you're there, I'm going to take care of you. Right. And that is in Christ. Now, I don't know about you, but I'm real comforted by I that. I am too. Yeah. I'm really comforted by that because things happen in this world that we hate. There's words that we hear like cancer and like dementia mm -hmm. and there's, there's loneliness and there's handicap and there's loss of mortal life. Sometimes even our children, there's, mm -hmm. there's, there are things that that shake up our world. But God is telling us here that our city of refuge cannot be shaken because there's these two immutable things. Mm -hmm. And they're not just kind of probably going right. to happen kind Maybe. of things. <laughs> right. We're talking about God <laughs> swearing. I, I, you know, I, I hate the way that we hear it thrown around. I swear to God this. But God can say, I'm going to swear by myself. Right. And he did it. And he did it with regard to our safe place. Mm -hmm. And I, to, to think about the God of the universe saying, I'm giving you two things that you can count on to know that you're going to be safe. Mm -hmm. That's my city of refuge. And I really need that. Yes. So that is um, from the heart tonight on mm -hmm. city of refuge because that's how I feel about Hebrews right. chapter 6 there. Or do we have comments or do you have something else mm -hmm. about Hebrews 6? No, um, I, this uh, studying the cities of refuge, I've never studied it in this way, you know, comparing it. And it did give me a, a, a sense of security. And I know I should have always felt that. Um, you know, we always should. We shouldn't live in fear. But um, when you study it like this, it really does remind us that we are, if we are in Christ, we are, we are safe. It's really easy for us to have this mentality of, oh, I messed up, oh, you right. know, I'm, I'm not gonna. And we do have to be faithful. Right. We do have to be in the city. If, if the avenger, the devil, catches us outside the city, you know, he's gonna get us. Right. And we're not gonna be protected, but if we're in the city of refuge, if we're doing what God has told us to do, it is, it is a protected place. Mm -hmm. And you go in it through a door and it has a wall around it. Right. You know, it's not that you can't escape. You can't get out. You're, you know, I hate that security of salvation in our, because of what some of denominations have taught. Security of salvation means once you're saved, you can't be lost. Right. I, I'd like for security of salvation to mean something else right. <laughs> in our vernacular. Yes. What it means is that if we're obeying God, He is going to take care of us because there's those two immutable things, His eternal purpose and the confirmation of the promise that we have in His Word. And I have those two things, and those two things cannot be shaken. Right. We've got it. 
Well, I also, I, I wrote it down somewhere. I don't know where I wrote it down, but I also thought about um, in John 10, Jesus talking about being our shepherd and how it made me think about how as a shepherd, he is our provider and our protector. Mm -hmm. And it, um, it, it just made me think about him protecting mm -hmm. us in that way. I mean, we are sheep and mm -hmm. he's, and he's watching over us. Mm -hmm. He's protecting us. Yeah. I love that. And he is the door. <laughs> yeah. To the fold. the fold. <laughs> right. You know, he's, he's both of those things. Right. And, um, and he is our sustenance. He's what mm -hmm. we eat. He is in, you know, we think about him being our shepherd. He's everything in the parable of the shepherd. Right. You know, so right. um, I love that there is a door, there is a fold, mm -hmm. there is a, an entrance to the city, there is a wall around it. Right. And it is because of the immutability of our God. And if, don't start telling me that you believe in God and you mm -hmm. believe in the Bible, but you don't believe in his church. You don't think mm -hmm. you have to be a part of his church. Right. That is your city of refuge. And that mm -hmm. is what he has provided for you to be safe. Okay. I love it. Any more comments before we go on to the no. year of Jubilee? No. Okay. I want to talk about Jubilee, the year of Jubilee. There are several guesses, uh, educated guesses about what yes. the word actually meant. But one is to bring back. I love that one because um, their possessions were brought back to the original owner. Mm -hmm in the year of Jubilee. So Emily, as succinctly as you can, go ahead and tell us what was the year of Jubilee? Well, I actually wrote down words that describe the year of Jubilee. Okay. So I put a year of release, rest, redemption, return, no oppression, holiness, freedom, feasting, debts forgiven, um, is what I wrote. Is what okay, I wrote. so it was so, a year that happened every 50 years. Right. And it <laughs> happened, it began on the Day of Atonement. Day of Atonement. And it was a year in which if you had purchased land from someone else, God intended for the land that was given to each tribe and to each family to remain with that family. Right. So in the 50th year, if you had purchased land, it reverted back to the original owner. If you had purchased a slave, he was free mm -hmm. in the 50th year. And it was really interesting that Jubilee was also sort of a banking term in that society because their, um, the amount of money that you paid for a piece of property was prorated yes, according it. to the year mm -hmm. of Jubilee. So if you bought a piece of property and you were only going to get to keep it a year, it wasn't going to cost very much. Right. But if you bought a piece of property right after the year of Jubilee and you were going to keep it 49 years, it cost more. Mm -hmm. So they prorated, you know, oh, yeah. it was like, um, you know, it was just like going to the bank to get your loan. And they they would say, well, you don't need very much. It's almost Jubilee, you know. Right, <laughs> Next right. Week's the, Next week's the release. <laughs> Next week's Jubilee, the release. <laughs> right. So you don't have to borrow very much. Right. To, uh, but I don't know what you're going to do with right. land in a week. So if you were going to uh, cultivate land, you know, and, and pass it along to your children, you're going to buy it shortly after the Jubilee right. and keep it for a long time and pay more for it. So the value was based on the year of mm -hmm. Jubilee. So that's very interesting. So Clark says, and it's interesting that um, Emily and I did not collaborate on our study here, but we wrote down the exact same quote from one commentator, mm -hmm. Clark, who says, the Jubilee seems to have been typical, the great time of release the gospel dispensation, when all who believe in Jesus are redeemed from the bondage of sin, they repossess the favor of God, the only inheritance of the human soul, having all debts canceled and the right of inheritance restored. I love that quote. Did mm -hmm. you go ahead and write I, more? Go ahead and read. Well, um, he, he continues to go on and say um, that the prophet Isaiah alludes to this in 26, 13 and 61, one through three, I think, which we're probably gonna mm -hmm. read. Um, uh, and um, someone else is quoted as saying a lively prefiguration of the grand consummation of time which will be introduced in like manner by the trump of God in 1 Corinthians 15 mm -hmm. um, when the children and heirs of God shall be delivered from all their forfeitures and restored to the internal inheritance allotted to them by their father and thenceforth rest from their labors and be supported in life and happiness by what the field of God shall supply okay well, you know, you're you're kind of saying here two things. You're saying, I mean, Clark is saying here that all who believe in Jesus and obey, I'm going to mm -hmm. say obey, are redeemed from the bondage of sin and repossess the favor of God. Your mm -hmm. other commentator was saying the Jubilee is, is when we yeah, go to Clark, heaven. 
Right. Clark quoted this this man mm -hmm. as saying, you know, mm -hmm. when we go to heaven. Okay. So it really can be either or both. Mm -hmm. It could be both of those things. I like to think about the Jubilee as our current. Right. We have been released from the bondage of sin. Definitely. We have been set free. So uh, let, let's do, look at Isaiah 26, verse 13. If you'll turn to 26, I'll turn to 61. Okay. And let's read Isaiah 26, verse 13. O oh Lord our God, masters beside you have had dominion over us, but by you only we make mention of your name. Masters have de have had dominion yes. over us. But then when you look at 61, 1 to 3, the Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings to the meek. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to those who are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord, and the uh, year there, and the day of vengeance of our God to comfort all that mourn, to appoint to them that mourn in Zion, to give to them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy, joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they might be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he might be glorified. So there we have uh, captives being freed, uh, those who are bound up, mm -hmm. to uh, those who are brokenhearted to be bound up. Um, and it, he says, this is the acceptable year of the Lord. Mm -hmm. Galatians 5, verse 1, I wrote down, oh, yeah, talking about too. freedom. Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith mm -hmm. Christ has made us free, mm -hmm. and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. I also wrote Romans 6, verses 17 to 23. I think that's a pretty obvious one to write down. Yeah. Um, it says there, God be thanked, you were the servants of sin, but you have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine which was delivered you. Being then made free from sin, you became the servants of righteousness. I speak after the manner of men because of the infirmity of your flesh. For as you have yielded yourselves members, uh, I'm sorry, for as you have yielded your members servants to uncleanness and to iniquity, even so now yield your members servants to righteousness and to holiness. You were the servants of sin, you were free from righteousness. What fruit had ye then in those things whereof you are now ashamed for the end of those things is death? Verse 22, but now being made free from sin and become servants to God, you have your fruit into holiness and the end everlasting life. Freedom, our year of Jubilee is, that is symbolic of our freedom from sin and the freedom that we have in Christ. So what do you have? Um, I wrote down Romans 8, 2 because it talked about um, Jesus making us free from the law of sin and death. Okay, very good. Um, and 2 Peter 1, 4 talks about how we've escaped, I believe, um, 1, 4, by which we by which have been given to us exceeding great and precious promises that through these you may be partakers of the design, divine nature having escaped the corruption that is in the world okay. through lust. And I then I had the, written down Galatians 5 as well. Okay. I think one version says having escaped the pollution. Mm -hmm. So uh, I love that. Mm -hmm. um, Leviticus 25 verses 8 through 17 is the, we're not going to take the time to read all of that because right. that is uh, the establishment of the year of Jubilee. Mm -hmm. But um, Emily, I think you probably took those passages and wrote down the adjectives. I did. In those yeah. passages. Will you That's read right. those adjectives one more, more time, time? Okay. for us? I put um, release, rest, redemption, return, no oppression, holiness, Freedom, feasting, debts forgiven. I love and that. There's probably more, because, but I mean, well, I just, you covered about every aspect of mm -hmm. the year of Jubilee, and now it says, notice New Testament passages that emphasize the inclusion of the new covenant. And I don't know how I worded that in the book, but I want us to look at um, some New Testament passages, and I'll just quickly mention them because we're out of time. Acts 10 verses 34 and 35. Acts 10, verses 34 and 35. Let's see exactly how that words it. I think that's the one. That's where Cornelius was first coming um, into the kingdom. 
And that's where Peter first said of a truth I perceive that God is no respecter of persons, mm -hmm. but in every nation, he who fears him and works righteousness is accepted with him. Romans 2, verses 10 and 11, I have mentioned. Um, if you'll get that, then I'll yeah, turn to Romans the next one. Romans 2, 2, verses 10 and 11. But glory, honor, and peace to everyone who works what is good, to the Jew first and also to the Greek, for there is no partiality with God. No partiality, no respecter mm -hmm. of persons. Romans 3, I had 21 and 22, which says, The righteousness of God without the law is manifest, being witnesses by the law and the prophets, even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ to all and upon all them that believe, for there is no difference. So we had no respect of persons, no partiality. Now we have no difference. And then finally, we've already looked at Romans 6, 17 mm -hmm. to 23, but it's clear there too that God was making a big statement beginning in Acts 10 with Cornelius that I am opening up the doors of the city of refuge. This, this release is for both Jew and Gentile. Right. Now, do we have more comments before we move on? No. The significance of the Day of Atonement from Leviticus 25.9. Leviticus 25.9 just tells us that the Jew, year of Jubilee was not going to start until the atonement was made. Mm -hmm. And our Day of Atonement happened at Calvary. That's where our blood was sprinkled and the, our Jubilee can't begin until, until after right. that sacrifice. Luke 24, 44 to 48. I think those passages are significant. So if you're listening, go ahead and turn to Luke 24, 44 to 48. And that is the significance of beginning at Jerusalem. Luke 24, 44 to 48. Let's go ahead and read okay. that if you have it, Emily. Yeah, I'm almost there. Okay. Then he said to them, These are the words which I spoke to you while I was still with you, that all things must be fulfilled which were written in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms concerning me. And he opened their understanding that they might comprehend the scriptures. Then he said to them, Thus it is written, and thus it was necessary for the Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day, and that repentance and remission of sin should be preached in his name to all nations beginning at Jerusalem. And where, where did that happen? Um, I mean, specifically, what day was that that the preaching started in Jerusalem? That was um, the day of Pentecost. In Acts 2, the day of Pentecost. Mm -hmm. I love the significance of beginning at Jerusalem because he says here Christ was going to suffer. He was going to rise from the dead the third day. All that happened in mm -hmm. the proximity of Jerusalem, right around right. Jerusalem. And then it was Jerusalem then in which um, the first gospel sermon mm -hmm. was preached as had been prophesied in Isaiah 44. So here we have um, the beginning at Jerusalem and the captives being freed to, and this was for all nations right. beginning at Jerusalem. So I love that. And then uh, we have feasting, freedom, and debts being forgiven. For feasting in the, the, um, at the Jubilee was a time of feasting. I put Luke 14. That's one of the parables where it was a feast to which people were invited. And obviously it meant the kingdom of God. Right. People were invited. And remember, they finally had to mm -hmm. go to the streets, streets and invite people. And that is the inclusion of all at the feast. So I put that. I also put Luke 15, which was the prodigal son. And there was mm -hmm. feasting there was. when he came back mm -hmm. to the kingdom. So I don't know. It, what did you put for feasting? Did you get some more um, on the feast? Well, the spiritual feast, I, I just went straight, straight with the Lord's Supper. Okay, um, good. You know, and I put down all those passages because I guess that I, that's just where I went in my mind. Well, that's so. a good place. That's that's fine. I mean, that's a that's a parallel too. That's yeah. good. Okay, and then freedom. Um, I put Luke four seventeen to twenty one. I think we've already been there tonight. Um, that there is. Yes, we've um, already been there. So oh, that's, well, yeah, where he talks about. Uh, the freedom of the, the day, yeah. Okay. The and day. then debts were forgiven. Um, I put Acts 13 there, Acts 13, yes. 38, and 39. 
And in Acts 13, 38 and 39, it says, um, Be it known unto you, therefore, men and brethren, that through this man is preached unto you the forgiveness of sins, and by him all that believe are justified from all things, from which you could not be justified by the law of Moses. There's a debt we couldn't pay mm -hmm. until Jesus Christ died. But our debts were forgiven. Um, Ephesians 2, 12 and 13, I mentioned... Ephesians 2, 12 and 13. You were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel. Those are Gentiles and strangers from the covenant of promise. You had no hope. And when you were without God in the world. That is really a disparaging yeah. description there. But yeah. now, in Christ Jesus, you who were sometimes far off are made nigh by the blood of Christ. I think we've mm -hmm. referred to that passage yeah. before. But I love that mm -hmm. because there's nothing I can think of. I was listening to some documentary documentary the other day and they were saying that um, you can live and they told how long you can live without food and they told mm -hmm. how long you can live without water and they told how long you can live without sleep but then they said sometimes people can't even make it there to to those lengths of time without hope can't mm -hmm. live very long without hope right, and how many right. people have you known of that had some sort of a disease and as long as they were hopeful oh yeah that really it helped kept, them to right. kick that disease but yeah. when you lose hope when you think there is no hope mm -hmm. and I've, I've watched people who are looking for a child who's lost in the woods and they think that you know a bear's eating a child or whatever you know and I, I was reading a kind of a commentary by one of the uh, family members of a victim of 9-11 and he said that day that they gave up on the search mm. when they said anybody who's in there is dead yeah we're not going to look anymore he said mm. that was it i just there was no i lost hope right. and hope was what was making me go on mm. hope we were without hope we were in a very desperate situation but then came the year of jubilee then came this time when our captivity ended when we were returned to our possessions mm -hmm. and it is a time for feasting for freedom for rejoicing because our debts are forgiven and it was a time of rest did you put rest in your list Ye yes, I know I'm rest was sure. in that chapter I'm pretty yes and I of did. course the key verse for that would be when jesus said come to me all, all, you, all you who labor rest. and are heavy laden and i will give you rest that's mm -hmm. matthew 11 28 to 30. Mm -hmm. And I did want us to get to close. Do you want to say something before we go to the very last thing, the practical no, okay. thing? Okay. I did want to. Do we have any more comments before we go there? No. I wanted to look at uh, the practical ways that we have refuge. Refuge from what? What is it in your life, Emily, that you most appreciate about the refuge? What is there practically that that makes you think, I'm glad I don't have to deal with this because I'm in the city of refuge? Um, well, number one on my list was um, being anxious, mm -hmm. you know, um, because, you know, uh, when you have children at home or, you know, um, there's lots to worry about. And mm -hmm. so I find that um, if I can just say, it's, it's all going to be okay, you know. And what passage would you put with that? Would you put one? Like that um, makes you think, I don't have to worry about this. God's well, got this. Well, okay. Put me on the spot and I Sorry. can't think. No, it's okay. I was just trying to think quick. Um, I can't think yeah, of Mine would be, right. I mean, you would think of Romans eight twenty eight. Yes. Uh, yes. All things so work together, together for, for good. good. I right. would think of First Peter 5, 7. I cast all my care on him because he'll do it for me. Right. Casting all your care on him, First Peter 5, 7. Um, what else did you have on your list? Uh, fear. Um, guilt. Um, is a big one, I think, you know, living with, with you mm. know, guilt and past I had, mistakes. Guilt was my first one. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's because I do a lot of, I don't want to call it counseling, but talking to people who mm -hmm. are having a very hard time overcoming guilt. Um, thinking of one little girl I've been talking to lately who just keeps on coming back over and over and over. I know that I'm not doing this anymore, and I know that God's forgiven me, but I just feel dirty. I don't mm -hmm. feel like, and even this week, she wrote to me and said, people look at me as because they don't know that I was involved in this sin, and so they look at me like I'm all pure and everything, and she said, but I, I don't feel like that. Mm -hmm. I don't, and she's forgiven. She's right. made it right. She's 
um, we must realize that the City of Refuge offers us complete absolution right. of of sin and and that we can be free from the guilt of sin mm -hmm. and that's first john 1 7 it continually his, his blood, blood continually, continually cleanses. cleanses us yes i put uh, the need for revenge mm, i'm really big. glad that i don't have I to don't take have to care of that, all the right? revenge because right. It belongs to him, Romans 12, vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. And so all I can, all I get to think about is the positives. What mm -hmm. good thing can I do for this person? Mm -hmm. And you know, I had a lady talk to me the other night and she said, well, I just gave up on the doing good. I'm not, I'm really backed off on, on doing good for this person who hates me so much because she said it just seemed to be making things worse. You know what? We don't get to pick, do we? Right, no. We don't really get to pick whether it's making things better, <laughs> better or, or worse right. because God said to do it. And so right. it's not it's not the result that we're looking for out there in that person that mm -hmm. makes us keep doing good things for people. Right. It's that I'm going to obey God and I'm going to do what He said. And so um, I, I, I love that I don't mm -hmm. have to worry about revenge. Um, I put hopelessness. We just talked about mm -hmm. that. I put anxiety like you did. What else did you put? Uh, sorrow, um, okay. which, I mean, we do have refuge uh, from, I mean, you know, even though I know sorrow can carry on, I mean, we grieve, I guess, you know, we can grieve. But we don't sorrow but, as others sorrow, First right. Thessalonians because we have hope, 13. right, because we do have hope. Um, That's what Paul said. Don't sorrow right. like the world sorrows because you're going to see him again. And right. he d went on and described how exactly right. it's going to happen in 1 Thessalonians 4. You put sorrow for that one. I put mm -hmm. death. Same thing. Mm -hmm. Okay. I put family turmoil. Mm -hmm. I'm really glad that yeah. in our little family, Glenn, me, our children, we didn't have this constant anger and bitterness and backbiting and all of that that I sometimes see in other families of the world we didn't we didn't have that because mm -hmm. we were all tied tethered to Christ and we had refuge from mm -hmm. that turmoil because there was an order of you know Glenn was the head of our family I was submit not that we were perfect but I right. knew that my role was to be submissive to him and then you you start when your children are very young, putting that respect for authority in them, and you kind of you have a refuge mm -hmm. from the turmoil that goes on in lots of families. Do, yeah. And I put Hebrews 12 for that because, of course, it is the it's the New Testament discipline chastening passage that says discipline yields the peaceable fruit of righteousness. righteousness. Right. What else to put? Um, I. I, I think I started running out of things because this is where my list kind of ends. But I put burdens, which would probably be under like anxieties, you know, um, mm. just the worries of the world, mm. trying to carry, mm. you know, worry about things. Maybe sometimes, maybe sometimes we try to, you know, we, we have to keep away from worrying about the things that the world is worrying about, you know, mm. um, sometimes finances and things like that or mm. just those things. And we just have to. Mm -hmm. You know. And we also just kind of have to magnify Him. And when we magnify Him, then that automatically leaves less room for magnification of things mm -hmm. that are of this world. You know, right. He's the big thing. Mm -hmm. And so once you get the big thing, uh, it's kind of like the <clears throat> the big rock in the bucket. You know, once you get right. the big rock in the bucket, you realize that, you know, all the other things are unimportant. Right. And they fit around the big And it rock. really does make a difference when you magnify him in that way. Mm -hmm. I'm, and I'm not saying I have that perfect by any means. But mm -hmm. since I view it that way, I really do have less, way less anxiety mm -hmm. about things. Because mm -hmm. I just don't worry like I mm -hmm. used to. It, because mm -hmm. it, I just know it's going to be mm -hmm. okay. You know, yeah. so. One way or the other. You right. Know? It, it, yeah, it's, it, things don't work out the way mm -hmm. that you think they will or mm -hmm. but it but it always mm -hmm. somehow and the is okay. The older you go and the more trials you go through, the more you realize that. That mm -hmm. you know, okay, this was really not what I wanted in my world. But everything that's in my city of refuge is still the same. Right. That city is not gonna be attacked by a bomb. Mm -hmm. It's not gonna have a Muslim terrorist. It's not nobody's gonna get cancer. I mean, you right. know, in that city everything right. is always going to be the same. 
I know we're going to have comments, but let me just quickly right. go through the rest of my list. I have fear like you did. Mm -hmm. He hasn't given us a spirit of fear, but of love and of power and of a sound mind. I put uh, freedom from sin. Mm -hmm. And I know that we are going to sin, but, you know, First John chapter 2, verse 1, John said, These things I write to you that you might not sin. Right. Um, we're going to have sin, but mm -hmm. we're never going to have deliberate, intentional sin. Right. And I, I love the freedom from sin that we have in the city of refuge. Impurity, 1 Corinthians 6, I put, and we talked about that, you've been washed, sanctified, justified. I get to put the impurity out of the city. Uh, disease. Mm -hmm. And in what sense are we free from disease? We're still going to, our families are still vulnerable in this on this earth, but we're going to a place where there is no disease or, or no death. And even while we're here, there are certain diseases that we're not, we're just not going to get. Well, I'm not going to, I am not ever going to be HIV positive. I'm right. just not. Right. Because, you know, if you, if you're monogamous and the person that you live with is monogamous, you're, you're not. Right. And I, I love, um, I love that. And there mm -hmm. are others that I could put in that list as well. We're free from embarrassment. In a big sense, because I, I think about the prodigal son in the pig pen. Mm -hmm. Now, would yeah. he not have been ashamed right. if his, let's say his rabbi, mm -hmm. <laughs> had been able to take binoculars and look at him there? <laughs> right. How embarrassing. Right. And, he, and you know, what about when he had to say, after he came back home, well, how did you survive? Well, fed the mm -hmm. pigs. You know, that's embarrassing. Mm -hmm. And there are a lot of embarrassing things. I'm, I'm not saying it's bad to be embarrassed, but I am saying that there are a lot of embarrassing things that God just shields me from. Because I, I used to work with people who were very worldly, and sometimes on Monday mornings they would come in and talk about somebody yeah. who just shed their clothes or somebody who just TT in front of the world, you know? Right. And I thought, man, you know, I am never going to wake up on Monday morning and realize I did something like that. <laughs> right. You know? Right. I'm not dream I did it, but when I wake up, <laughs> I'm going to know, know right. that that never happened to me. Right. You know, so we're shielded from that. And then um, we're shielded from trials for nothing. You mm -hmm. know, some people go through hard times for nothing. For nothing. Mm -hmm. And I don't have to do that mm -hmm. because... Uh, James 1, first of all, tells me that trials work, patience. There's some great outcomes to difficult mm -hmm. things in my life. And 1 Peter 4, verses 12 to 19 talks about that. Mm -hmm. It says, um, you know, go ahead and be ashamed if you suffer because you're an evildoer. Mm -hmm. But do not be ashamed if you suffer for Christ right. because it's going to produce some great things in your life. So those are some of the things that are in the walls of the city of refuge from which I'm shielded and for which God has sworn he has purposed eternally and then he has sworn by himself because there's no greater and I'm telling you my city of refuge is going to be there it is right. not going to fall and I, I want to leave you with that I want you to know that you know that you know that you know that God's not going to let anything happen to that mm -hmm. you're going to be safe inside there so what other comments do we have and we'll be done? Um, Holly put for anxiety, Philippians 4, 6, and 7. Um, Alyssa put Genesis, uh, said Genesis 41, 51, God caused him to forget, losing a loved, not saved um, lo loved one, and you can't do anything, you can't do anything can make you feel despair because they are lost eternally, but somehow he causes you to forget in heaven. You know, I was thinking about that when we talked about sorrow, you know, um, when when it is a loved one that is saved, there's com there is some comfort, but how, I mean, most of us, most all of us have lost uh, loved ones who were not saved, and it, I mean, there is no, I mean, it's, it's just hard to overcome that. There is no comfort here. Right. But... God caused Joseph to forget in the passage mm -hmm. that she just pointed out. And God is going to make us forget some things in heaven mm -hmm. because I'm not, there's not going to be a sorrow in heaven. And so I guess um, I, I talked with a lady recently and she just said, I can't talk about this because I have no hope. I know mm -hmm. that I've said my final goodbye to my child. Mm -hmm. I will not see her anymore. 
And not only will I not see her anymore, but she is suffering and will suffer without end. How does a parent look at that? Right. Well, you look at that with faith in God that one day He will cause you to forget. Mm -hmm. That's how you have to look at that. And then we as parents who still can do something about this, the condition of our children, we look at that and learn that while there is time, we you better be doing can. everything that we can possibly do to make those children realize what the definition of true success is and make their way to be around the mm -hmm. throne one day. Other comments from the... Mm, that's, 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 that's all, all that we, we got. Had. It was a great study. Mm -hmm. Not as tied to, not as tethered to one or to one specific passage or even a group of specific passages, right. a very broad study, but thematically still, I think we can safely say that both of the, these things typify the condition that we have in Christ and the hope that we have in Him. Let's pray. Dear Lord, we are ever grateful for the study that brought us together tonight. We are thankful for the fellowship that we have in your word. Even though we're miles apart, we are close in spirit because we are family through the blood of Jesus. We are so thankful, Father, for the refuge that we have, for the fact that it is sure that you have purposed it eternally and you've confirmed it with an oath and those things we cannot even dare question and help us father to lean on that security and to find great joy in the protection that you offer us through your son our high priest we're thankful that he never dies so there is no succession there is no end to our security and our eternal home with you father we are thankful for the Jubilee. And we're thankful for the fact that we've been freed from the slavery of sin and that you've given us an inheritance. Help us to make sure that our reservation has been confirmed and help us, Father, to look forward to that time when we can be around your throne and to bring as many people with us as we possibly can. Help us in this study to bring nothing to you but glory. And it's in the name of your Son who made it possible that we pray. Amen.